Hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. How are you? Have you had a good weekend? I love that you are all saying hello to each other in the comments. Hi, Tammy, PC sister. Hello, Karen and Laura. Um, let's see. And then I saw a question from, I think Laura Goss asked, do you have to sign in for StreamYard? That's only if you're watching through um, Painters Clubhouse or through our free group, the Door Hanger Painting Tips group. If you're watching inside either of those groups, you have to hit the StreamYard link before I can see who it is that's asking the question. But um, I can see who you are, so you must have already hit it. So it's 52 uh, degrees here in Kentucky today, and so it's actually a little warmer than usual. But um, I'm trying to use a different, I don't like how it's putting a weird glare on my glasses, but I was using a different light to try to, um, let me see if I can angle it down, to make it a little brighter right here where I'm painting. And um, I don't know, it's putting a glare on my glasses, so I don't really like it. But um, sometimes the colors here, because my hand changes the lighting um, from the camera, Sometimes the colors don't show up the way they're supposed to. So anyways, um, hopefully you guys got the text that we sent out just a few minutes ago, letting you know that we were going live to paint. So if you didn't, be sure and text me at the number on the screen to get notified um, by a text message. You can also send me your pictures through that texting service so that I can like give you feedback or cheer you on as you paint. Thank you so much for sprinkling the love, Marty. I appreciate that so much. Brittany says, I see that you got your monogram box. I'm still waiting, but I love the shirt and earrings. Thank you. Yes, this shirt is from Framed. It is the um, January t-shirt club tee. It says, we rise by lifting others. I love it. And of course, I am always down for a raglan. I think that's what these are called. Tee with the, the I call them the baseball sleeves. And then these were the matching earrings this month. They're a navy and white stripe. I love them. So yeah, thanks for noticing. So if you're not a member of the Framed T-Shirt Club, I can drop you um, a link to that later in the comments. Hi, Michelle. Good to see your name on here. Um, oh, goodness, 23 degrees. That sounds so cold. <laughs> you love yours too, Pat. I'm so glad you got it. Okay, so some people are still waiting because, you know, postal service and everything's been a little slow. But okay, y'all, I'm so proud of myself. I cut this on the glow forge. <laughs> I did it right. Thanks to the help of our friend Erica Wallace from Wallace House Designs. She walked me through what I was doing wrong. And um, just to be safe, I decided to cut it in wreath size attachment um, because I think I want to put this on my wreath. I mean, not, sorry, not my wreath, my porch leaner or porch sign, whatever you want to call it on the front porch. I think I want to put this where the O is supposed to be. And so that's why, part of the reason why I did it this size. Also, because I was a little intimidated to cut anything bigger. But thanks to Erica's now help, I now know how to cut stuff that's bigger as well. So I'm figuring it out. I'm learning the Glowforge as we go. But it was so cool to watch it um, laser etch and stuff. So um, we also cut book bookmarks for the kids yesterday. Um, and they had their names on them and stuff. And they were just so proud of them. They loved them. So it was fun. Erica is awesome, isn't she? She's amazing. All right, so let's go ahead and get started painting. The colors I'm using today, if you're taking notes, <laughs> as a good student should, um, I'm using all Deco Art Americana paints in matte acrylic. And I'm using light buttermilk and snow white, black, dark chocolate, tomato red, sea breeze, canyon orange, neutral gray, and honey brown. Those are the colors. So if I forget to tell you later, just rewind to the beginning. All right, so let's start with our buttermilk. And we're going to actually paint the entire uh, face of this skull with the buttermilk. And thanks to the etching on the surface, we can actually still see that even after we've painted over it. So if you buy any of our etched blanks in our shop, just know that you can do like I'm doing right now and paint right over those lines and you'll still be able to see them underneath so that it's like paint by number. Makes it so much simpler. Also, to answer a question I know you guys are going to ask, I do not paint the backs of my door hangers. Um, and when they're laser cut like this, I don't paint the edges either. I, ju I just, I only do that if it's something that has been cut with a jigsaw or something like that that has a little bit of a, a rougher edge but I like that nice lasered edge so I don't paint over that. So I'm just using the light buttermilk right now and a flat tip brush and we're just painting over the entire design there on the front that will make it so much easier when we go to paint that design. Um, not having to paint around all of that with this buttermilk we're just going to paint right over it. Gives us a good base coat too. I think this cow skull is really cool. That Western, the Western stuff is really um, in style right now. I've been seeing it on lots of things. And so, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm in the South. 
I have no idea. But some of you who are from like the rural areas of California, this would probably really go with your decor or Texas. But even here in Kentucky, we like the cow skulls. What does your shirt say? It says we rise by lifting others. Totally believe in that saying, by the way. You love the blue on my shirt. Thank you. Laura said she saw the kitty, the kitty, the, the video of the kids with their bookmarks. They were so proud of them. They did such a good job. And instead of painting them with brushes and paints, they painted them with um, Posca pens. Um, and so it, even though, because it was like a six inch long bookmark, it made it easier for them to kind of control where they were putting the paint with the Posca pens. Let me dry this real quick. I got you, Melissa. The spring challenge signups will begin on January 25th. Would you guys like a sneaky peek at what we're going to be painting during the spring challenge? Would you like to see? <laughs> Hi, Bridget. Laura says I'm so messy. Oh, so yeah, we do the spring challenge um, every year. We also do a fall challenge. Um, the spring challenge is usually in, I think, March, but we're moving it up to February this year. So you guys will be able to put your spring door hangers out as soon as spring hits. But um, if you want to say, okay, you're saying yes in the comments. You're saying you do want to see it. Okay. All right. Because I just painted it right before I did this live. Let me remove this view real quick. Oh, wait. Can I do that? No, I don't want to do that because it might mess up the, the uh, microphone. Okay. Ready? Drum roll. Spring challenge. This is what we're going to be painting. I'm so excited. I am in love with the magnolias on this one. Spring challenge, guys. Now, Painters Clubhouse members will get to participate in this spring challenge at no extra cost. It's going to be a part of your Painters Clubhouse membership. But Painters Clubhouse get, are going to be getting a bonus, okay? The bonus that you guys will get for this challenge is I'm going to record a separate video showing you how you could make this into a year round door hanger where you could change out these magnolias as attachments. So painters clubhouse members will get a bonus video where they could show, they could use the frame separately and the magnolias could Velcro on, but the regular challenge is all one piece and we painted them. I want to show you how to do the shading on those magnolias. It's going to come with the lettering and everything. It's going to be so fun. So mark your calendars for January 25th. That'll be the first day you can start signing up. The challenge doesn't officially start till second week of February, but we're going to try it a little different this year. You guys are going to get access to the painting videos as soon as you sign up. So you guys will be able to go ahead and get a jump start if you want to on painting them. But if you want to participate live with the group, there's no rush. You can wait and do it each day of the challenge with the group on the second week of February. So you will have plenty of time to prep. But I know some people, when they sign up for something, want to get started right now. They want to like, they don't want to wait. And so for those people, we are going to go ahead and give you guys the videos ahead of time. So you can take them at your own pace, paint when you want to paint. And of course, we want you to share it all with us inside of the pop-up Facebook group that we will be having for the Spring Challenge. And then right after the Spring Challenge is over, we will invite you guys to join Painter's Clubhouse. I think the challenge participants will also have an opportunity to join on the front end of the challenge. So you can get in a little early if you participate in the challenge. Bridget said, yay, I got a Glowforge before Christmas and hopefully I will cut it on there. Yes. I cut mine on there, Bridget, so you should be able to also. Now, if you don't have a Glowforge and you still want to participate in our spring challenge, um, I cut this one with a jigsaw. So there's a video showing you how to do that. So you do not have to have a laser cutting machine to participate in the challenge. By the way, we're talking about this a little too early. You aren't going to be able to sign up till January 25th, which is in, what, six days? So six days from now. And yes, you'll be able to order the blanks on that day as well, Vicki. So January 25th, circle your calendar, circle your calendar, circle, circle that day on your calendar. Have you tried out the paint brush Posca pen? No, I haven't. Maybe I should. I haven't heard of that. Okay. Marie's excited. Awesome. Okay. So let's go ahead and paint the horns on our 
skull here. We're going to use the dark brown color. I've got two coats of that buttermilk on the skull, so we're going to let that kind of dry a little bit while we paint the horns the dark brown. And I switched to a smaller flat tip brush for this. By the way, sometimes like in these um, Facebook Live videos, I get really chatty and forget to kind of explain different tips and things like that. So the benefit to participating in a challenge like that is I break it down much simpler for you guys. I'm not talking to people in the comments because it's a pre-recorded video. Um, I'm giving tips as I go. I'm talking about the kind of brush and why I'm doing things and how I'm doing things. And so you will pick up all sorts of little golden nuggets of painting goodness that I explain while I paint that you wouldn't get during a normal Facebook Live. Okay, let me dry this. <laughs> Started spinning around on me. Will it fit on the Glowforge? Yes. Yes, it will. You can cut up to a 19 inch piece on the Glowforge. So um, I did this one smaller, but because um, I'm wanting to use it as a porch leaner attachment, but you can do up to 19 inches wide. And then if you have the Glowforge Pro, you can use the pass through option and that will allow you to do pretty much as long as you want. You just have to keep pushing it forward and cutting again and lining it up. Okay, there we go. What's the big, oh, I just explained that. Um, it is easy to learn the software. It takes a little bit of um, getting used to. And so there's several people um, in our Painters Clubhouse who have one as well. And so if you were stuck on something, you could probably ask one of them. I know Miss Erica Wallace helped me out when I was, uh, I kept, couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong on this one part. And she's like, oh, it's just this. And I was like, well, thanks for letting me know. Now I know. <laughs> um you just circled the date on your calendar. I love that. Thank you, Christina. Awesome. Lynn's excited about the spring challenge. It's going to be so much fun. The challenges are always so, so fun. Um, it's really neat to see that a lot of you guys who have always thought that you couldn't paint. Suddenly you're like, oh my goodness, I can do this. And I didn't realize it. And so it's, it's awesome. All right, let's go ahead and get started on painting our thing here. Let me, hang on, I don't want that brush. I want a, um, small flat tip brush. Here we go. This one's real little flat tip brush. And this little square, I know y'all can't see it very well because, you know, the, I've painted over the etched lines. But this little square here in the middle um, is supposed to be an orange color, but the orange that I have is a little bright. So I'm going to add just like a drop of the buttermilk to it and see if I can lighten it a little bit. Um, I feel like maybe not orange, maybe not buttermilk. I may have should have added a drop of like a, a mustardy yellow because I wanted it to be more of a, a light yellowy orange. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it. Yellow. Did you hear my Southern, my Southern twang come out? I said yellow instead of yellow. Okay. We're almost there. One more drop of buttermilk and I think we'll be good. I couldn't find the color I wanted, so we're making the color. So this started out as Canyon Orange, but we added a drop of Marigold and a, drop, a couple drops of buttermilk. That's looking a little bit more like what I'm wanting. Okay, I'm gonna wash this, wipe this off. Lasers come with a learning curve, but they aren't hard at all. Thank you for sharing that with us. I don't know who it was. You'll have to hit the StreamYard link for us to be able to see your name. So I appreciate you sharing your feedback. Lee, I use Deco Art Americana paint. Hi, Karen. It's good to see you back. Oh, goodness. She said she had a major heart attack on December 12th. Y'all, um, welcome Karen back. I'm so glad that you are feeling better now. Heart attacks are nothing to, nothing to sneeze at. That's serious. I'm so glad you're feeling better. Okay, I think this orange is about right. It's still a little bright, but I think once we get our other colors on there, it'll be fine. So I'm painting over this entire square right here, even though in the middle it has like a, a cross sort of shape. I'm painting over that and I'm just going to paint over it again with, um, what color was it? It was, I'm going to paint over it again with brown. So the brown will cover, no big deal. So it just makes it a little easier. There you go. I think it's probably going to take two coats.
Luckily, this paint dries really quick, especially if you have a hair dryer sitting handy. Okay, I like the way that looks. All right, let me check and see what else is supposed to be orange before we move on. Um, there are some other parts, but I think I want to wait and do those last. Well, we'll do this little bitty. There's a little bitty diamond right here in the middle. It's going to be orange. But there's some other little tiny accents and things that are supposed to go on here. But I think I want to like freehand those later. I don't want to do those on right now. I want those to be kind of finishing touches. Hi, Janet. Good to see you. Thank you, Brittany, for sprinkling the love. And Jenny, I appreciate that. Um, and LaDonna, thank y'all for sprinkling the love. You are great. Um, you thought you gave them StreamYard permission. Who knows? Who knows? I never can remember if I've done it or not. And I think you only have to do it once. And once you do it once, you don't have to do it every time you're I'm on live. But who knows? Okay. You can also watch me from YouTube, you guys. I don't know if y'all knew that. I keep saying I have new comments down towards the bottom, but it won't let me refresh and go down and see them. So I hope this thing has not decided to glitch on me. Okay. I think we're good. Hi, Macon. <laughs> she said, I see you survived the imposter. She's talking about the Among Us game my kids kept talking about the other day. I had no clue what it, what it was. And she was like trying to explain it to me in the comments. It was quite funny. Or not in the comments, but in, uh, oh, this is the wrong size brush. In Instagram DMs. Okay, so I've switched to a really small brush because this is a lot of detail, you guys. So you kind of have to, especially on a door hanger or a design this small, you're going to have to work with a skinny, itty bitty little brush. But it's going to be worth it. It's going to look awesome when we're done. Imagine doing this on a really large scale, though, on a really large skull shape and then like hanging it on the wall, like above a bed. Wouldn't that be awesome? I did one one time that was like four feet wide for someone and they did hang it on their on, on the wall above their bed. But there, that one didn't have like an Aztec, like Western design to it. It had um, flowers on the skull. I did that one. I bet it was about a year and a half, two years ago. I'm trying to remember now. It was pretty awesome, though. I had never painted anything that big until that moment. Well, no, I can't say that. I had painted the the Grinch stuff before that was like six feet tall. I guess I had never painted anything that big to hang on a wall, though. This is the honey brown color. I'm using this around the... Um, sort of diamond shape that's on the forehead of the cow. It's going to take a couple coats to get, oh, look what I did. I transferred, I must have got it on my hand and got it and made a mess. So let's go ahead and just touch that up while we've still got some of that buttermilk color. Can't believe I did that. <laughs> um, do I have that cow for sale in my shop? Yes. So you can get it um, at shopdoorhangers.com and you can get it with the, the designs all etched in the surface just like this so that all you have to do is paint inside the lines. So I'm kind of referencing looking back at my photo and then also looking at the lines on the design to add all of these little details. So it's got these little arrows pointing toward the middle. Those are also the honey brown color. What else does it have? I think that's pretty much everything that's honey brown. So next, let's paint the, the little cross sign in the middle of the diamond here. And we're going to do that with the same color that we used on the horns. It's the dark chocolate color. Again, I'm not freehanding this. This I can see those etched lines in the surface, so I'm just painting inside the lines right now. It's definitely easier when you're not having to freehand it because you're not having to worry about proportion and getting it straight. It's just already on there. Makes it so much simpler. Okay, that's going to need another coat. But hey, Amy, you love this design too. Hi, Amby. It's your first live as a PC sister. Well, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Ruth says, I have a real skull from New Mexico that my husband's brother sent us in the mail. That's awesome. And then Kimberly said, I have a flowery skull painted on an old window pane hanging above my window. I bet that's gorgeous. You should send me, text me a picture of that. 
By the way, if you don't know how to text me, you can text me at this number and you'll be notified when I go live. Plus, you can send me pictures of things. So if you want to screenshot that real quick, I'll take it back down off the screen. But anytime you want to send me a text of a picture of something you're painting or something that inspires you, I love seeing those. So just send them to me. And I am the one who checks those. So I will respond. Um, can someone tell me if they paint the etching or leave it the base color? So I think what she's saying is, do you get the paint down in the etching lines? Yes. So I have painted over this and I made sure that the paint goes down in the etching lines. And even on these, I made sure that that paint gets down in those lines because I want, I want those lines to be camouflaged when I'm done. I want them to kind of disappear into the paint. Is that, does that answer your question? No sound. Hmm. Try, try watching us. Somebody, she, I just realized she can't hear me unless it's got captions going across the screen. Michaela, if you can hear me or read my captions, go watch us on YouTube. Maybe that would help the sound come back because she doesn't have sound. Okay, let's do a second coat real quick on this area here now that it's dry. Because I bet the sound would work on YouTube if, you, if she's having Facebook problems. Hey, Erica, I was just talking about your girlfriend. I was telling them you were my savior yesterday when I had Glowforge problems because I, I was so new to all this and I was having troubles understanding why something wasn't working right. I told them you, um, you, were, you swooped in and showed me what I was doing wrong. So if it wasn't for you, I would not have been able to cut this out right. I probably would have had to go out and jigsaw it. So I appreciate that so much. <laughs> okay, good. It's fixed. Awesome. Okay, let me look at my picture again. So next we're going to paint. Um, let's do the insides of these areas gray. I should have cut them out, though, now that I think about it. Um, I wasn't paying attention to that whenever I did it on the Glowforge, which it's okay. You know, we're just going to paint them. So I'm going to use this neutral gray color and paint inside the eyes. But if you were having to cut this with a jigsaw or something, you might not want to cut these out because it can be kind of tedious to cut these areas. But I wasn't even thinking about it until just now. I should have cut that out on the Glowforge. I'll have to figure out how to do that, Erica. <laughs> I probably should have altered the SVG to remove those, those inside lines. I'm learning y'all. It's okay. It's going to look awesome anyways. So this is the neutral gray color. I'm just using it to paint inside where these little cutouts normally would have been. My stomach is making all kinds of weird noises. I hope y'all cannot hear that. <laughs> I ate some leftover pizza for lunch and it's talking to y'all. It's trying to tell you. It's going to take two or three coats of this neutral gray. I don't, I haven't used this color much and I'm not liking the lack of coverage it's giving. It's kind of frustrating. So I may have to dry it and try to do another second or third coat to get this to cover well. Oh, good. Erica says it's an easy fix. <laughs> I'll be calling you later, I'm sure. Probably not today, but the next time I have to cut something like this. I'm, pro I'm sure I probably could upload the image into Inkscape and just delete out the areas that I didn't want or something. I just didn't even think about it until after I had already cut it. The fact that, or actually, I didn't think about it till just now when I was getting ready to paint it, that I might not want those on there. In any case, not everybody is going to take the time to sit and cut these out. So if you don't, just know that you can paint them gray and it'll still turn out looking awesome. Okay, it's going to take about three coats of this color. I'm not liking this color. What do you mean what is wrong? Oh, I was just talking about how I'd rather have the eye, the eyes cut, cut, the eyes cut out. 
and the mouth cut or this little part on the nose area cut out and I didn't even think about it. So I should have done that, but it's okay. We can't do it right all the time. So this color is going to take like three coats to get it to cover properly, but we'll get over it. I'm just spoiled to sometimes being able to do things in like one coat. <laughs> okay. So now that's done. Next, let me see what color this is supposed to be. It's supposed to be teal and then red. So let's work with our teal color next. It's called Sea Breeze. Brenda says, my biggest struggle, struggle is still lettering. White has the worst coverage. Um, yes, it, it can be hard, especially with white lettering. I don't really know if there's a perfect fix for that, but it can be frustrating using white with lettering because it feels like you have to do multiple coats to get it to look right. This is like the same exact color as my shirt. So I don't know, but just know that that you are not alone in that struggle. We all have that struggle. Look at that. That's pretty. What else is supposed to be this color? Okay. These little diamond, um, sort of not diamond triangular sort of areas up here are also this color. I'm trying to do this without getting the paint all over everything. It's a very small area to paint. But this color co covers magnificently. So I'm definitely not gonna have to do three coats of it. This is the Sea Breeze from Deco Art. Do this little area here. There you go. And um, right here. For those of you who are just now tuning in, I gave a sneak peek of what we're going to be painting during the spring challenge a few minutes ago. Signups will start on January 25th. So be sure and circle that date on your calendar, January 25th. Okay, there's a couple more places that have teal, but we're not going to go to those just yet. I want to do all of those last because they're very detailed. So I want to finish these bigger areas first. So I'm going to go to this color here. It's called tomato red. And this is um, right around this middle part. You're welcome, Brenda. You finished the winter challenge and it looked pretty good until you added the white lettering. Oh, that's so frustrating. Um, yeah, I don't really know what the fix for that is. I wish I did. But I even still struggle with it myself. Perhaps you could try a paint pen or something. Maybe that would cover better. I don't know. This tomato red is a really pretty deep red color. But in the challenge, I walk you through um, how to use the jigsaw to cut out your blank. I walk you through how to transfer the design to the blank using your graphite paper. And then we break the painting part down into three videos. So part one shows you how to paint like the background. Part two shows you how to paint the flowers. And then part three is the lettering and the final touches. And then we actually have like a part four where we teach you how to make a bow to match. Although bow making is not my area of expertise. So it's going to be a super simple bow. It's not going to be like a, a bow you would see made by a wreath maker or something like a really fancy bow. It's going to be a real simple bow. Look how pretty that is. Oh, let me show you. Love it. Do you recommend, what do you recommend for getting dry paint off of linoleum? Um, what's that stuff called? Is it crud cutter that works really well? You guys may know better than I do. I've never had to try, I've never tried to get it off of linoleum before. I do know that acrylic paint breaks down with the use of alcohol, like rubbing alcohol in clothing. So you could even try rubbing alcohol. I would let it soak on there for a little bit and then scrub it off. Belinda, this cow is approximately 12 inches from horn tip to horn tip. <laughs> hey, Mary Lou. I cut this one on my Glowforge, so it's a little bit smaller because um, I wanted to use it as a um, porch sign attachment. Okay. Oh, hang on. I wanted to switch brushes. I'm going to go even smaller. Um, we're going to do the outside area of this with 
dark chocolate. Same color that's on the horns and on that little like plus symbol up there. This is a teeny, teeny, tiny round tip brush. It's good for adding itty bitty details like this. If you're at all intimidated by the shading that we do on those magnolia flowers on the challenge, don't worry about it. It's going to be as simple as simple can be because shading is still not one of those things I'm super confident with. So I teach it in a way that anybody can do it. Okay. Because there's just a little tiny bit of shading involved to make those magnolia flowers look 3D. So if y'all want to see another sneaky peek of it, if you missed it earlier, I'll show you now. This is the one we're going to be painting during the spring challenge. And signups began January 25th. What do y'all think? Do y'all like it? Terry said, I love everything that you do. Um, I have even purchased some of the templates. I've tried to print them, but my printer will not print them. Oh, Terry, I don't know that I can provide printer support. Are you printing the, the PDFs? That's the only thing I can tell you is if you're not printing the PDF, then that may be your issue. But as far as understanding what's wrong with your printer, I'm not sure if I can help with that. I do know um, you can print them off like at your local office depot or your local library or something if you have to. Oh, goodness. I don't know who this is, but she says she has COVID. It's just showing me Facebook user. Tell me who you are. I'm sorry you have COVID. <laughs> Kelly, that is too funny. <laughs> you caused somebody else to get addicted to door hanger painting. That is hilarious. I love it. You love the monochromatic look, Melissa. It's definitely, I wanted to go with something a little bit more farmhouse this time. So that's why we chose that design. Okay, now comes the fun part on all this stuff, all of these little details. So I'm going to start with the, um, the orangey color, and I'm going to paint these. You guys can't see them, but there's tiny little arrows right here, kind of going down to a point. Let me rotate this to do this side. Little bitty arrows. Okay. And then there's a line that goes around the eye, like so. And it continues kind of off the side there. And then there's another one over here. I'm just going to rotate it. That way I can get the right angle. There we go. Now, there are also, let's see, it goes down this way. And this is not etched on the design, so I will have to freehand this part. But there's like some tiny little triangles, which are easy to paint. You just have to have a steady hand or possibly even use a Posca pen for these parts. But there's little triangles going down, and in between each triangle is a little red dot. So they go down that way on this side, and then on this side, they're kind of opposite like they're offset. This would have been a lot of things etched on the design, so I tried to keep this part off so that it wasn't too overwhelming to paint. Okay, so we'll go back and add the red dots in a moment on there. Now those also continue down the outside of the face here. So here and here. In here, three triangles, and then on the same same thing on the other side. And then there will be a red dot in between each of those. Look how cool this is looking! I'm excited. Okay, we're going to use the orange also to do these little designs up in the corner. The, this is etched on there. Um, it's just kind of like a line with another color next to it. So we'll do the next color in a moment. Oh, I didn't get that one very good. 
There we go. Okay, let me double check my picture. Yes. Let me check my comments. <laughs> this may not be able to. How do you paint large letters and not have brush marks? I did this the other day using a old kitchen sponge, believe it or not. I used the sponge part. I dipped it in the paint and then I just wiped it on the letters. Um, and so that is the quickest way to paint letters like that is with a sponge. Thank you, Erica. She said, it's looking pretty. You're going to do yours with florals. That'll be beautiful. <clears throat> Doreen says, have you considered adding sealing steps into the challenges as a newbie? When I did the prior, I never sealed it. Oh, good point. So let me make myself a note because I would not have thought to do that. I'm glad you brought it up. Where's my ink pen? I'm going to make myself a note. Make sealing video for challenge. We will do that this time. Thank you for that um, feedback, Doreen. I'm making myself a note and putting it on my computer right now. You love the colors, Brittany? Thank you. All right, I'm going to rinse that same brush. It was this little bitty brush. It's really good for doing these tiny little details. It's actually got a stray hair on the tip, so let me... Trim that. There we go. Okay. Now, um, okay. Hang on. Let me look at my picture. Okay. So now we've got this, the sea breeze color, which is this teal and it goes along next to the orange and then kind of curves up in an L shape. So you may need to dry in between if you have a hard time controlling your, your paint. Very cool. Okay. And there's no more teal anywhere else. So we're going to wash that out. And then next we're going to use the red, which is the tomato red. And this part goes next to the teal. And then it goes down in an odd little Aztec looking shape. Don't ask me what it means. I don't know. It was cool looking. <clears throat> Let me rotate this. What do you think? I like the combination of colors. The red, teal, and orange look really cool together. Pretty cool. Okay, now we need our red dots and they go, let's see, on each side of these little triangles. And I'm just barely dabbing my brush to make the dots. Just letting it touch. Let's go ahead and do one more. That wasn't on the picture, but I think it will look better like that. And then there's little red dots on this between each of the triangles. Really cool. Oh, and then there's red dots. There's lots of red dots in between each of these little di uh, triangles up here. You could also use a, a Posca pen to do these parts if you have a red Posca pen. Oh, I need to slow down. My hand is getting shaky. Look at all the details. So cool looking. Little shapes under the nose are not even. Oh, I'm sure they're not. I free handed them. <laughs> not worried about it though. Um, oh, Pam, you're the one with COVID. I'm so sorry to hear that. I hope you're feeling better. I hope you're, you know, I hope it's not getting you down too much. Okay. So next I'm going to use that slate gray color again, or not, no, it wasn't slate. It was neutral gray. And there's like one or two more detail lines that we're going to add in. This one's going to go around the outer edge of this orange shape around the eyes. And this is etched on here. So I'm just following the etching lines. And then it's also going to go 
where was the other one on the inside of this gray or sorry this teal triangle shape just adds a little bit more definition My chickens are making all kinds of noise out there. I can hear them squawking. Okay. Looking good, sis. All right, I'm checking my picture. I see one more thing detail-wise. Well, two more things that I haven't added. One, um, let's see, what color is that? It looks like the honey brown. And I'm doing this on the bottom edge. There's just these tiny little dots like that. And then the top edge here. It's all devils in the details, y'all. Let's see. It's on the inside part. Where? Here. Awesome. And then last but not least, some white highlights. We got to have the white highlights. So I'm going to use white, white, like regular white. And we're just going to add a little bit along the bottom edge right here. And then a little bit, let's say, across the top. And then across the top of the horns. You could also do this with a paint pen if you wish. And since I didn't cut these out, I'm going to actually highlight them. So I'm just going to gently wiggle my brush inside there to kind of accent those. I think that looks better. I like that. What do y'all think? Oh, I forgot. I wanted to add a little bit too to these little designs in the middle. So a little bit highlight here, maybe here. It can be easy to get carried away with these little highlights. So I'm going to try to just find a stopping point. <laughs> I just wanted a few. It can be very easy to get carried away. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Brittany. You guys are awesome. Look at all those details, you guys. For the small dots, Christy says she likes to use the end of a paintbrush, and I can change the size of the dots by changing the brushes. So smart. Yes. Doreen asked, does your one chicken still try to get in the garage? No, she's given up on that, finally. <laughs> so I don't know. All right. Well, you guys have a fantastic week. I will see you for Friday Fab Five on Friday. So come and join me then. Um, I'm going to be in Florida, you guys. I'm going to Destin with my creative club sisters, Christy Hawkins from Texas Art and Soul, Ashley Rates um, from Rye Oak Designs, Heidi Easley. Oh, sorry. I said Christy Hawkins from Texas Art and Soul. She's from the Social Easel. Heidi Easley from Texas Art and Soul. Sarah Williams from Framed, um, Gretchen Wheeler's come in, Brandy Bracy, she is um, a hair salon coach. Um, who else? Who else is going to be there? Oh, Cindy Manley from Art Shattered, Casey Hope from Pizzazz Art Studio. I think that's all of us. Please tell me I didn't forget anybody. I should have been counting. There's like nine of us total. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to be at the beach with them this week. So I'll be doing my Friday Fab Five from the beach on Friday. So if you guys want to keep up with our nice, our, our fun little trip and watch what we do and see all the craziness, watch my stories. I will be sharing updates as I travel and as I meet up with these awesome girls. And we are going to be going live together at some point while we're there. So I look forward to seeing you all then. All right. Y'all have a great week and send me a picture if you paint one of these. I can't wait to see it. Oh, let me hold it up like this so you can see. Look how cute. <laughs> I'm excited about this one. Bye, y'all.